epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Disney's theme parks are well known for being fun for all ages, but that doesn't mean they don't have some unsettling moments. Over the years, talented Imagineers have been bringing the nightmares with their advanced audio animatronics. After the resounding success of my underwater animatronics video, I figured it was time to go deeper into the subject. So I conducted a few polls with my viewers to determine the scariest Disney park animatronic out there, excluding the ones I've already talked about. And with the help of fellow YouTube channel Fast Pass Facts, we're going to rank them today. So, as voted on by the viewers, here are the top 15 scariest Disney park animatronics. Before we get started, here's a special shout out to YouTubers John Y. Chen and LMG Vids, who provided much of the footage for this video. They've got some excellent Disney content on their channels, so if you want to check them out, I've put links in the description. Number 15, Karak from Shanghai Disneyland's Roaring Rapids. Shanghai Disneyland is the most recent Disneyland resort to open to the public. As such, it is home to some of the most state-of-the-art attractions out there. These include the world-famous Tron Coaster, the elaborate Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for the Sunken Treasure, and a whitewater raft ride named Roaring Rapids. While these kinds of rides on their own are nothing new, Shanghai Disneyland shakes up the concept with an engaging storyline to go along with it. According to legend, the rivers of Adventure Isle are protected by the Guardian of the Water. This mythical beast takes on the form of a giant crocodile named Karak, who is on a never-ending quest to protect his sacred domain from trespassers. On the way upriver to a base camp, the guest's raft is blocked by a fallen tree, which sends them in the wrong direction. Passengers end up coming face to face with the beast, which is portrayed by one of the largest and most impressive Disney animatronics out there. The fact that his enormous jaw gets so close to the raft is sure to give kids nightmares of being eaten alive. Though reportedly in limited operation, it's impossible to deny the impressive attention to detail on this one. Number 14. The Phantom of Henry Ravenswood from Disneyland Paris's Phantom Manor. Out of all the renditions of the famous Disney Park staple The Haunted Mansion, Phantom Manor is widely considered to be the best. First opening with the park in 1992, Phantom Manor made more of an effort to tie into its themed land than its predecessor. Imagineers crafted an engaging backstory for Paris's frontier land. In the 1800s, a prospector named Henry Ravenswood struck gold and thus created the successful mining town of Thunder Mesa. He would also build a high-class manor to live in. Meanwhile, Henry's daughter planned to get married to a train engineer and leave town, which Henry greatly disapproved of. Ravenswood would meet an untimely end in a massive earthquake that would also heavily damage the town. After his death, Ravenswood became a phantom and would kill his daughter's fiancé. Voiced by veteran actor and Big Bad Wolf fan Vincent Price, the phantom makes his appearance towards the end of the ride. The phantom takes the form of a formally dressed man with a skull for a head. With a shovel in his hand, he laughs sadistically as guests descend to their eternal dooms in the afterlife. Until recently, Ravenswood made another appearance near the end of the ride as a rotting cadaver, which was even more chilling than his previous form. Though after a 2019 refurbishment, this animatronic was replaced with another skull-headed phantom. With his badass looks and dapper sense of fashion, this fellow will continue to terrify guests for years to come. Number 13. The Carnotaurus from Animal Kingdom's Dinosaur Despite their habit for unnecessary sequels and unnecessary original movies, dinosaurs are still the textbook definition of awesome. So after the announcement of a dinosaur-themed ride at Disney's Animal Kingdom, Dinomaniacs were eager to take a trip to Orlando. Originally opening as Countdown to Extinction, not to be confused with the Megadeth album of the same name, Dinosaur Story centers around guests traveling back in time to collect an iguanodon from the Cretaceous period. Thanks to some poor planning by David Hodges here, guests are sent to the exact day the now infamous asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs. Along the way, passengers will come face to face with some of the most voracious beasts to ever walk this earth. The ride has gone through a few changes over the years, but one thing that has remained the same is the main antagonist, the Carnotaurus. With its reddish hue, menacing teeth, and protruding horns, this guy is pretty much what you'd get if a T-Rex and a devil had a baby. At several points in the ride, the Carnotaurus comes within inches of the ride vehicles, lunging its teeth at passengers as if they were a Greek-style pizza with extra cheese, pepperoni, bacon, onions, garlic salt, and red pepper flakes with a strawberry melon iced tea to wash it down. Even worse, this dinosaur appears four times during the ride. I remember as a kid thinking the ride designers were intentionally trying to troll children. 
it pops up over and over and over again, and the ride's finale has it charging towards guests. It's an absolutely terrifying experience for children, but overall, I'd consider this the best dark ride at Animal Kingdom, providing the necessary thrills, spills, and chills a ride based on dinosaurs was meant for. Number 12. The Lava Monster from Tokyo Disney Sea's Journey to the Center of the Earth Tokyo Disney Sea is often considered to be the most impressive and elaborate theme park on Earth. Its incredible scenery and state-of-the-art attractions all contribute to an unbeatable dreamlike atmosphere. Its top-tier thrill ride is undoubtedly Journey to the Center of the Earth. Similar to Epcot's Test Track, this ride uses a giant slot car system to take guests on a thrilling adventure to the Earth's core. Based on Jules Verne's novel of the same name, Journey to the Center of the Earth features numerous elaborate set pieces. These include crystal caverns, glowing forests, and the Earth's molten core. Inside the core, guests enter the nest of the lava monster, filled with molten rock and large, bulbous eggs. But the monster is unhappy with guests entering its nursery. Soon enough, riders will come face to face with the monster. This large, centipede-like creature glows a brilliant orange-red color. It screeches and roars at guests, showing off its multiple legs and spider-like fangs. With the ride's height requirement at a mere 46 inches, there's no doubt this monster has given quite a few kids nightmares over the years. This advanced animatronic is only part of the awesome experience this ride has to offer. Number 11. Monstro from Pinocchio's Daring Journey Found at Disneyland in California, Tokyo, and Paris. Widely considered the greatest Disney movie of all time, 1940's Pinocchio was incredibly ambitious for its time. Its dark fantasy story incorporated some truly frightening and disturbing themes. The donkey transformation scene in particular is still considered one of the scariest moments in any G-rated movie. Another memorable scene is the climax involving Monstro the Whale swallowing Pinocchio whole. In addition to the famous storybook Canal Boat's Tunnel, Monstro also appeared on Pinocchio's Daring Journey. Already an unsettling ride on its own, this experience ends with a bang. Towards the end of the ride, guests will approach a pile of rocks by the ocean. Jiminy Cricket warns guests to watch out for Monstro, when all of a sudden, the whale's animatronic head lunges out from the rocks. What makes this especially surprising is that before he attacks, Monstro's head blends perfectly with the rocks in front of him. With its large mouth and sharp teeth, it's needless to say this is one of the most startling Disney dark ride encounters in existence. Number 10. Madame Leota's Tombstone from Magic Kingdom's Haunted Mansion What can I say about the Haunted Mansion that hasn't already been said? This perfect balance of horror and dark comedy is one of the most iconic attractions in existence. Each rendition of the mansion has its own quirks and memorable moments, but for this segment of the list, we're specifically talking about the one at Florida's Magic Kingdom. Believe it or not, this animatronic isn't even on the ride itself, but is instead in the queue. One of the ride's most famous characters is Madame Leota. Though her story varies from park to park, she is most well known for being a floating, disembodied head who calls on the spirits to send a message from somewhere beyond. The Disney World version contains her tombstone, which can be viewed from the queue line. At first, it just seems like a standard headstone, but stare at it for long enough and you'll see the head of Leota actually move a bit. And every so often, her eyes will suddenly open. The design of this animatronic is so inconspicuous at first, the detail really makes it look like metal. But there's no doubt that plenty of tourists have been startled by Miss Leota. Compared to Disney's other animatronics, this one is relatively simple. But when it comes to being creepy, sometimes less is more. Number 9. The Giant Squid from Disneyland Paris's Mysteries of the Nautilus Disneyland Paris is considered one of the most gorgeous and engaging theme parks in the world. Like Tokyo Disney Sea, this park offers dreamlike themed lands and attractions to heighten your sense of wonder. In addition to its dark rides and roller coasters, Disneyland Paris also offers a few walkthrough attractions. Perhaps the most impressive is the Mysteries of the Nautilus. Like Journey to the Center of the Earth, this experience is also based on a Jules Verne novel. In addition, this attraction arguably features an even scarier animatronic than the Lava Monster. At regular intervals, the window opens and a small show is put on. Through the window, guests can see a large animatronic squid attacking the submarine. It lashes out with its tentacles and bares its beak, all while staring at guests with its menacing red eyes. What makes the squid even scarier is the illusion of it being underwater. Water is placed between two panels of curved glass, with bubbles being pumped through said water. 
This gives the squid the appearance of being underwater, despite the animatronic itself being completely dry. The illusion ensures those with submechanophobia can easily be unnerved by the squid, which just goes to show the talent of Disney Imagineers. Number 8. The Xenomorph from Disney's Hollywood Studios' defunct Great Movie Ride One of the most famous gone but not forgotten attractions is the Great Movie Ride. Originally opening with the park, this slow-moving tram ride took guests through some of the greatest movies of all time. Numerous classic films were represented with detailed sets, props, and animatronics. Some of the most memorable segments included Raiders of the Lost Ark, The Wizard of Oz, and strangely enough, Ridley Scott's Alien. There's no denying Alien is one of the greatest sci-fi films of all time, but the idea of an R-rated movie being represented in Disney World is truly bizarre in hindsight. Apparently, former Disney CEO Michael Eisner wanted to make an entire attraction built off Alien to attract older visitors, but we'll get to that later. As for the great movie ride, the Alien portion portrays the film's climax, where Ridley tries to escape the ship before it self-destructs. Once the countdown begins, a xenomorph will lunge at guests from the ceiling. Its inner jaw juts from its mouth, its skull is visible from its massive head, and its fabulously manicured nails reach towards the passengers. This H.R. Geiger-designed creation is always as bone-chilling as it is badass, and the animatronic perfectly encapsulates his work. Fortunately, despite the ride's closure in 2017, the xenomorph would be preserved in the Disney archives. Number 7. Regis Philbin from California Adventures Defunct Superstar Limo In every discussion of the worst Disney rides of all time, Superstar Limo always takes the cake, and one look at a POV clearly says why. Originally envisioned as a high-speed thrill ride about dodging the paparazzi, the death of Princess Diana in a limo crash caused a sudden change in the ride's concept. Still though, Michael Eisner was interested in a ride based on Hollywood, and he wanted to cram it with tons of inside jokes. Unfortunately, what the public ended up getting was a dull, cheap, and undoubtedly cheesy ride experience. The ride featured corny caricature animatronics of various celebrities. Stars like Whoopi Goldberg, Antonio Banderas, Tim Allen, and Jackie Chan would make appearances to the amusement of, I guess whoever liked those terrible late 2000s spoof movies. But the creepiest celebrity by far is the late great game show host Regis Philbin. Now let me preface by saying Regis was a legendary game show and talk show host whose warm charisma will be fondly remembered. What he certainly was not was a bug-eyed, Botox-injected creep who flexed his money at you. The fact that he popped his head out from a doorway like Foxy the Pirate made him even more unsettling, and that permanent smile didn't help at all. Fortunately, this terrible attraction would meet its bitter end less than a year after it opened, and it would eventually be replaced by Monsters, Inc., Mike and Sully to the rescue. The general mechanics that moved Regis into view are now used to move Randall, and that's only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to reused animatronics from its predecessor, but that's a story for another day. Number 6. The Yeti from Animal Kingdom's Expedition Everest Upon its opening in 2006, Expedition Everest was the most expensive roller coaster ever built. At a total price tag of $100 million, this ride brings the majesty of the world's tallest mountain to Florida. With the coaster itself made by Dutch manufacturer Vacoma, this ride takes guests on a high-speed trip through the Himalayas. The ride story centers around a transportation system taking guests to the base of Mount Everest. Along the way, though, the formidable Yeti rips out the track, sending guests on a crazy ride back down. After a few drops and banked turns, the train enters a cave where riders will spot perhaps the most intimidating animatronic ever built by Disney. At 25 feet tall, this beast stands at the height of around three and a half Shaquille O'Neal's. Its skin measures at around a thousand square feet, and its fur weighs in at over 6,000 pounds. With the use of hydraulics, this hulking beast was designed to swipe its hand at the passengers as they pass underneath. It was truly an amazing sight. After about a year, though, a crack reportedly formed in the Yeti's foundation, making it impossible to operate safely. Disney officials have vowed to repair the Yeti, but as we wait, a strobe light is used to simulate movement. Hopefully one day the Yeti will be repaired. Number 5. The Horned King from Tokyo Disneyland's defunct Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour Like Mysteries of the Nautilus, this was another walkthrough attraction. On the other hand, the experience was significantly darker than the former. Taking place inside the park's signature castle, this attraction took guests on a frightening tour through the castle's dungeons, where they would incur the wrath of some of Disney's nastiest villains. 
The Magic Mirror challenges guests to a battle of good versus evil, where they will face off with Chernobog, a fire-breathing dragon, and the tour's main antagonist, the Horned King. This dude originates from the 1985 Disney film, The Legend of Zelda The Black Cauldron. Upon encountering him, he will give a dark, foreboding monologue where he informs guests of their impending dooms. This includes lines such as, Pretty disturbing. And here's a fun fact. Both on the tour and in the original movie, the Horn King's Japanese voice was done by Shozo Izuka. Izuka would go on to dub the voice of Jamba in the Lilo and Stitch franchise, and is also the Japanese voice of Carl from Up, Nappa from Dragon Ball Z, and Dr. Neo Cortex from the original Crash Bandicoot games. The fact that a Disney attraction is directly tied to Crash Bandicoot 2 is my personal amalgamation of all things childhood. Number 4. Big Al from the Country Bear Jamboree You may be wondering how a character from such a family-friendly show got a spot on this list. Now, we have nothing against Big Al, and I'm sure he's a great guy to grab a drink with. In the context of the show, though, he can admittedly be pretty unsettling. First of all, the song he sings isn't exactly one you can hoe down to. Voiced by country musician Tex Ritter, Big Al's morbid, depressing song comes absolutely out of nowhere. The theater goes dark except for a single spotlight on Al, and then he sings. There was blood on the saddle, and blood all around, and a great big puddle of blood on the ground. As if that weren't bad enough, he gives a creepy laugh after singing it. <laughs> it's as if he thinks a cowboy's cadaver is funny. Fortunately, Al spares the audience from the rest of the lyrics, which read, a cowboy lay in it all covered with gore, and he never will ride any broncos no more. Oh pity the cowboy all bloody and red, for the bronco fell on him and bashed in his head. Needless to say, these lyrics read more like a Billie Eilish song than one you'd hear in the Magic Kingdom. Add in his dead-eyed facial expression, and you've got the animatronic equivalent of Freddy Fazbear's grandpa. Some find Big Al's off-putting song darkly humorous, including myself, Still though, many park guests agree with how creepy Al is. YouTube user Winter Pantsu says, Real talk. This scared me when I first went to Disney as an 8-year-old. Like, I was so thrilled, and suddenly this happened. YouTube user Natalie Morris says, I saw this live when I was 5 and had nightmares for months. And YouTube user Wolfie Shade says, Creepy! Ah! Once again, we have nothing against Big Al. But it's hard to deny that his song has made more than enough people feel uneasy to make this list. Big Al, rock on. Number 3. Hopper and his Black Widow Army from Animal Kingdom's It's Tough to Be a Bug 1998's It's a Bug's Life was Pixar's second feature film, and further cemented the company's status as an animation juggernaut. To help promote the movie, Michael Eisner suggested basing a 3D show for it for Disney's newest theme park, Animal Kingdom. Located inside the park's centerpiece, The Tree of Life, this show actually debuted around seven months before the film came out, which makes it a prequel. The show's story involves Flick the Ant making the audience honorary bugs and showing them just how hard it is to be an insect. Several critters show off their survival skills, including a tarantula played by Cheech Marin, a termite played by French Stewart, and a stink bug played by a stock fart sound effect. However, the film's antagonist Hopper interrupts the show, expressing his hatred for humans and their treatment of insects. Hopper appears as a full-bodied animatronic, and it really looks like a giant talking grasshopper is on stage. Those with orthoterophobia will certainly be intimidated by this irate anthropod. And speaking of anthropods, Hopper didn't come alone. In fact, he brought an army of female Black Widow spiders with him, or Latrodectus in scientific terms. These ladies drop from the ceiling on what look like extremely thin wires. The spiders bob up and down and move their legs, which makes for an absolute nightmare scenario among arachnophobics. Seriously, what were they thinking? This footage looks hard to look at, honestly, it really does. 
Hopper eventually tells the spiders to back off and leave the humans to himself, but before he can attack the audience, he's scared away by a chameleon. This terrifying show is still in operation, considering its elaborate theater and location inside the park's centerpiece, it isn't likely to leave Animal Kingdom anytime soon. Number 2. The Alien from Magic Kingdom's Defunct Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter No Magic Kingdom show is more infamous or horrifying as this one. Originally intended to be based on Ridley Scott's Alien, Michael Eisner wanted to create an edgy attraction to lure in older park guests. However, after Imagineers objected to the use of an R-rated franchise, Eisner decided to drop the Alien tie-in. Nevertheless, he wanted to make this show as intense as possible. After years of development and retooling, the show would finally open in 1995. The star-studded attraction would feature performances by Tyra Banks, Tim Curry, and Kathy Najimy. Best known for her roles as Mary Sanderson in Hocus Pocus and as the voice of Peggy Hill. The show's story centered around an alien corporation named XS Tech, showing off their teleportation technology at a convention. To test the machine, the company's chairman L.C. Clench wants to beam himself to the audience, but things go awry when the signal gets intercepted. Instead of the chairman, a carnivorous alien creature is beamed into the theater. This specially designed creature is like an insect crossed with a crustacean. This horned hellspawn has large wings, a heavy exoskeleton, multiple legs, razor-sharp teeth, a scorpion stinger, and... BIG MEATY CLAWS! The alien proceeds to escape the tube and devour a maintenance worker, and guests can feel his blood down on them. With the use of binaural audio on the seats, water effects, and air blasters, this ride gives the illusion the alien is breathing down guests' necks. In actuality, the alien never actually leaves the tube. It just sinks down into it while the lights are out to make it look like it escaped. In the end, excess staff is able to trick the alien into re-entering the tube, where it is blown up. Loser! You're a loser! The show was condemned by parents for being too scary for the Magic Kingdom and its popularity would suffer greatly as a result. That led the show to close just eight years after it opened. It was later replaced by the critically panned and far less scary Stitch's Great Escape, but that show would also meet its end in 2018. Nobody knows what attraction will replace it, but if Disney wants to terrify guests again, they could always use the show building to screen cars too. Number one, the evil queen's hag form from Magic Kingdom's defunct Snow White Adventures. Snow White was the first ever feature-length Disney film. It took the world by storm in 1937, and it revolutionized animation as a storytelling medium. Among its most memorable elements is its villain, the Evil Queen. Jealous of Snow White's beauty, the Queen spends the entire film plotting her doom. In hopes of taking Snow White's title as the fairest of them all, the Queen plots to disguise herself as an old hag and trick Snow White into eating a poison apple. That plot serves as the focus of the ride. This ride resembles a ghost train more than a Disney dark ride. At various points, the queen will pop out and offer the apple to guests, as her evil cackle echoes throughout the show building. The ride took place in near total darkness, with various jump scares and disturbing imagery scattered throughout. The witch is always popping out at guests, and when she can't get them to eat the apple, she flat out tries to destroy them. Upon reaching the dwarf's diamond mine, she tries making the mine cave in and running guests over with a minecart before finally dropping a giant diamond on them. The latter scheme actually works as passengers are greeted with a flashing light effect to represent being crushed by the diamond. Snow White herself never actually appears on the ride as the intent was to put guests in her shoes as she evaded the witch. But do you remember the scene in the movie where Snow White gets squashed by a giant diamond? <laughs> Neither do I. Suffice to say, this ride's dark nature made more children cry than the time Fortnite faked its own death. By the mid-90s, this ride would be refurbished and made significantly less scary. Though both versions are now defunct, the original will be forever remembered for just how traumatizing it was. Special thanks to FastPass Facts for helping me out with this video. Animatronics are honestly up there with roller coasters as some of my favorite things to talk about. And if you love these creative masterpieces of engineering as much as I do, feel free to check out their channel through the link in the description. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, I've put a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy and I'll see you all next time.